and look who's here, Diane, hello. Hi. <laughs> Hey, we had some major technical difficulties, but here we are. We figured it'd be fun to just go live on here and see what happens. So, <laughs> so welcome, welcome. So our interview today is, like I just said, with Diane Loosely. And Diane, you are going to make fun of me, but I don't actually know what your title is. So I'm going to have to have you say what your title is at Family Search. Oh, I, I'm the Vice President of Business Development. Okay. I work on new projects, new initiatives. Okay. <laughs> so. Awesome. Okay, cool. So everybody in the comments really fast, let, let us know if the audio is okay and everything because we were testing it on Facebook and we thought we had it figured out well, sort of. We thought we'd try it. It didn't work. So just make sure, let us know if you can hear us okay, if you can see us okay, all of those things. Um, so that we can make sure that you guys get everything that you want. I'm actually going to, I can't hear Diane super great, so I'm going to throw in my um, headphones. And um, then we're going to talk about all sorts of fun stuff with Diane today. And I'm actually filling in for um, Sydney, who was going to do it, but she was having technological difficulties this morning. Okay, can everyone still hear talk for me, Diane? Hello. Okay, perfect. I can hear you so much better. That's better. So I'll look silly with headphones, but it's fine. Um, so anyway, so... Tell us a little bit, give me a little bit about your background. Just kind of tell us like how you got started in family history. Like what made you, where's your, where's your passion with connections and things like that? Tell me about you. Okay. So I got interested in family history at 13 years old. Um, wow. Yeah. My grandma passed away and um, at that time and my mom and I, we were in her house kind of cleaning it out, you know, and we mm -hmm. discovered a little something that was interesting and there was a story to it and so I got interested in story and I can tell you a little mm -hmm. bit more about that later but and so from there I I just you know kind of dabbled in it a little bit with grandma and mom you know it was a family thing and we were having yes. fun I was so intrigued by the stories and I think that's the key for young people is it's kind of the story and our place in history you know because the the thing that we found was actually uh related to World War II and, oh. and so I had never understood that my family had any connection to World War II, and yet I'd heard about it at school, you know, all that. So it kind of made this connection for me. So, wow. um, so I started doing it myself, um, and then I majored in it at BYU, and then um, started working at the Family History Library, and then went through, you know, a series of things. And then I was the director of the Family History Library before this role that I have now. So, okay. yeah. Awesome. So, okay. So yes, I remembered that you were the director of the family history library. I thought that was super cool. I remember thinking that was really cool. And actually I'm going to backtrack because when I met you, you won't remember this, but it was like my first year of Roots Tech and oh. I was with my friend, Lise Embley. Do you know her? Oh, Do you remember her? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, she introduced me to you my first year at Roots Tech because I had just moved here from Virginia, and so we met up there, and she was, like, just introducing me around, and I remember, I I didn't remember what your role was, I just remember that she said it was really cool to know you, <laughs> and so I was like, okay, cool, so every year at Roots Tech, I'd be like, I don't remember what she does, but then I remember when you were the director of the Family History Library, and I was like, that is so cool, and were you there when they switched it to be the... Um, Discovery experiences? Yep, yep. I was a nice work. Because I'm super passionate about young people being involved in family history. So, yeah. Well, it has changed. Like, I feel like the discovery experiences have changed family history. Like, I started into it a little bit before that, that happened. And I feel like ever since those, it's way easier to get people who are uninterested interested because it's just there's just like a, it's a connection thing. They can connect in a way that's simple, easy, and um, fun, right? Yeah. So those are super cool. That's awesome that you, like, I actually am curious, like, do you have any, like, fun, interesting facts about that whole experience that you could share? Oh, <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, the interesting fact is that we had over 70 different ideas for all of those experiences that are in there. And oh, we, wow. went, we went and we tested, um, you know, the ones we thought were the best, so about a dozen or so. Mm -hmm. And those were the ones that ended up testing the best, and those are the ones we started with. So, you know, that's it's, so it's, cool. Yeah, I love that. Well, and so for those of you who don't know, the Discovery Experiences, 
at several of the family history centers now, like a handful, right? Do you know how many now? I don't know. Um, yeah, there's there's several, but you, there's also many that you can do discovery experiences on just the computers. They don't yes. have big screens, but you can just do it on the computers there too. So. Yes, so which is so cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can do it from here. App too. You can get them on the app. Yes, so. yes, I love it. So yeah, so they're just experiences where you can go. It's more of an interactive um an interactive experience with like a map or with old photos or comparing your face to other people's faces. If you haven't come across it yet, I would be surprised in this experiment. But if you haven't, you should definitely check out familysearch.org slash discovery because that's where, right? It's slash discovery. Yes. Um, that's where you can find those. And then when you go to one of the centers, if you have an opportunity, they have like a big screen and it's touch screen and they have you hook in with your tablet and it's really, really cool. So kids, teens, even old people just think it's super fun. So it's a fun way to keep it interesting. But so Somebody was asking if there's more coming. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's more experiences, more things and more countries, more places, you know, because we want everyone all over the globe to be able to have discovery experiences. So, so are you still part of that team? Um, no, I'm not. I'm moving I'm <laughs> down to other projects. <laughs> so That's one awesome. Things, one of the things I do at Family Search and have for a lot of years, I love change. I love new things, <laughs> new exciting stuff. And so I just have been kind of a change agent. I go around and do different things. So in my yeah. current role, that's what I work on. So. Well, were you part of the original Roots Tech team, kind of? Um, no, not really. I oh, okay. participated in it, but I wasn't, I wasn't part, part of the yeah. brain on that. That's, that's great though. Roots Tech is one of my favorite things ever. So for those of you who don't know what Roots Tech is, it's a genealogy conference in Salt Lake and they bring technology and genealogy together and it is just super cool. So that's where I met her the first time. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> um, but um, actually, uh, what else was it? Okay, so sorry, back to our actual interview question. Sorry, I'm just having my fun. Um, could you share some of your exam some examples from um, a time when knowing stories of your ancestors strengthened you? Yeah. Do you have any examples of that? That's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about getting younger people involved in family history because I think it helps strengthen them a lot. And I love your experiment for that reason. Um, so, in fact, I saw in the chat that people wondered about the World War II story that, that I, you know, got introduced oh. to this. So I can tell that one then, and then an example. So when, okay, I, perfect. so when I was 13, we're cleaning out grandma's cedar chest, you know, the super cool treasure box. <laughs> that, that yes. 13 year old girl is like, oh, what's in there? You know, <laughs> and amongst like all of her doilies and tablecloths and, you know, all that kind of stuff, there was a German flag. Oh. <laughs> and it was a Nazi German flag, of course. Oh. I said, Mom, why does Grandma have this in her cedar's chest? Well, it, it turned out that she had a brother-in-law that was in a tank brigade, and uh, or battalion, I should say, and they um, liberated a town in France where the Germans had this, this storage place, a uh, warehouse, and so mm -hmm. he sent one of these flags home to all of his family oh my <laughs> as God. a little memento of the war. And so, but at that point in time, I had no idea any of my family was involved. Yeah, in World War II in any way, you know. So, and that would put, give it so much more meaning having that connection. Yeah, that's so like super cool, super cool. That's way cool. And so, you know, by learning about that, I thought, gosh, you know, my family's gone through some pretty difficult times, and that just made me have that connection. Plus, it it made me go uh, connect better with history and understanding that you know it's really the little people that make up the stories that make history and, right. and so that started that interest and then I have another ancestor that actually has her last name is the same as yours so I oh. might be related to her but um her that's name interesting was Ann Jewell huh. and she um she was one of the um pioneer ancestors of mine and she joined the church in England the the LDS church and she okay. she um the, because of that, they were persecuted really, really bad. And her husband ended up passing away. And so she decided to come to Utah um, with like, I think she can't remember exactly, but eight or nine kids. So this was oh my gosh. all these kids, right? Oh my and gosh. She came across and she ended up be, being part of one of the handcart companies that got stuck on the oh, planes. And, yeah. and anyway, there was a point at which they didn't have any food. And so she, she prayed and she asked for help. Um, put a lid on her Dutch oven 
things mm -hmm. and put it on the st on the fire. And, um, and when she lifted the lid, it was full of food. And wow. you know, she had these two little sea biscuits. That's what she started with. So anyway, that That's so cool. story just made me go, you know what, if she could have that amount of strength, and that amount of faith, I can do hard things too, because nothing I'm asked to do is is it's that hard? hard. Right. <laughs> right. No, play. it's true. That's yeah. funny. I was, can't, I'm curious well, before I say this, but any of you who are watching, I would love to hear if you have some cool stories that you've discovered like Diane's that are like, oh yeah, we, um, without that story, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Or, you know, maybe it, it helped you have appreciation that you ha didn't have before. I'd love to hear if you guys have any of those, share them in the comments for sure. Um, but yeah, just this weekend we were hiking with our kids and they were, one of my nieces was like, it's so hot. It's so miserable. I'm, my life is so hard. <laughs> and I was like, think of the pioneers. <laughs> and this isn't even bad. You get to go to an air conditioned car when we're done anyway. Yeah. So yes, I can totally relate. But I think that story with your grandma's chest is so cool. That's the other one I want to ask our viewers. Like, uh, do you guys have any fun stories of, of connecting with an ancestor or relative through like old mementos like that? Because I know I do like, it's the funnest thing in the world to go to like a great aunt's house or whoever's the family heirloom person in the family and go just dig into those um, chests and things like that is seriously one of my very favorite things. <laughs> to yeah, do, so. it's, it's, so right? it's, re it's really awesome. And then the exactly. stories that go with them is so great. And in fact, that's a challenge. You know, if you have not written down the stories that go with those artifacts, you need to. Absolutely. I mean, we just went, my mom just passed away a couple of years ago. We just went through her house and there was all of this China that we mm -hmm. knew came from an ancestor, but we don't no. know which one. Oh. The story, you know, so yeah. Yeah, write it down, write it down. Actually, I really like that because we've been talking about what we're going to do with the next. So like, obviously the experiment's almost over and we're like, how do we keep it alive like how do we keep people encouraged to keep on doing this and making those connections even though it's not necessarily for 21 consistent days anymore um that's a good idea i like that idea of like having a challenge maybe once a week where we could do something like that hey find an heirloom this week and post it and write down the story with it so you can share and then upload it to family search or whatever you whatever your yeah. your chosen site is so well and i love know, that there's, there's an app that i that i like that it's called joy flips Oh, yeah. And uh -huh. that, I, anyway. I haven't used it. I've heard of it, but I've never actually used it. Well, it's pretty fun because what you can do is you can put photos up in there, and then you can do a group call. So you can call, <sighs> call your family, and you can show the photos as everybody's talking about them. So you could do the artifacts, take pictures of the artifacts, put them up. Everybody could talk about it, and then it will do a full transcription of the call after the call. That is super cool. I wonder if it would work to do a screen record too. So you could have the oh, yeah. like video. <laughs> you could probably do that. Yeah. yeah, that would be really cool. The transcription would be cool too, but like the video would be really neat, neat too. I actually like that idea for journaling. Like I'm always trying to think of new and creative ways to journal and just make family history easier. So I actually like that idea of doing like a Zoom call with everyone and just screen recording it. Like yeah. Yeah, you, you could gather some good. Too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, gather some good so, family fun that way. <laughs> so somebody asked what the app was. It's Joy Flips. J -O -Y -F -L -I -P -S. Joy Flips. F L I P S. Yes. But there and are if you're out there, and I love your idea of just recording a Zoom call. That'd be yeah, great. yeah, that would work too. And you could just have it up on the screen or whatever, and when it like share your screen and with a picture of it or something. That's cool. Yeah, I love that. Okay, all the, we're we're already creating. Look at us. This is awesome. Um, okay, so I have a question off, uh, um, that I want to ask you, and that is, so what got you excited about this project? I know, like, you were excited to interview, and, and we were able to get you, and we were so excited, but, like, what excites you about the concept of this family uh, connections experiment? Well, I, so I've been doing genealogy since I was 13, right? So, um, and I've noticed a thing early on in my career at Family Search that like everybody thought that family history was dusty books and microfilm and you know just really the research part of family history you know and and people didn't realize that we're creating family history every single day you know yeah. and, and we are the most journaling generation ever because we're social yeah. meeting it you know we're doing all that and so yep. I love anything that encourages people to look at family history 
as something that's accessible to them and something yes. that's fun and something that's about connecting with others. Because really, if a lot of times people do family history in a solitary way, and that's not family history to me. Family history is about connecting with your living family, sharing, telling stories, you know, laughing around the dinner table about grandma's story about whatever, you know, and, and grandma telling you or grandpa, whoever telling you all these interesting stories about when they were growing up, you know, and especially now when we're all kind of in our houses and it's, you know, a little boring sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> During or, quarantine. You know, the kids are driving you crazy or whatever's happening. If you can take that minute to connect, and that's what I loved about you doing this challenge right now, is because it's a time for us to really reach out and connect to each other in ways that we can't physically, and mm -hmm. but we can with technology. And, and so that's one of the things I loved, is that you guys were thinking of a way to take a difficult situation and make it wonderful and, and yeah. help to connect in new ways. So. Which I love that you said that because one of the hardest parts about it was we put this deadline like it was like I, it, for some of you who are watching might already know but it was like brain like idea literal idea to actual launch two weeks exactly wow. and it was like <laughs> it was insane and so it was so much work for two weeks like the 10 of us ish um, that we're working like all the time we're working all the time to just make it come alive because at first it was just going to be this small thing but it just kept getting bigger and bigger and more people joining and it was like ah and so people keep asking like we need an about page we want to know who's behind this and I'm like we don't have time <laughs> like we're just trying to get it you know afloat which has been so cool but that's what I love because it was important to us that it started on May 1st because we wanted it to be available and something they could do even if it wasn't perfect which it hasn't been and that's okay um, it was more important that people have that opportunity to commit and to try connecting during the pandemic during like this hard time that we were all having so I love I love that you pointed that out because I think that is true like it's it's such a great tool in any time of life but especially in a time when we're we're kind of being forced to like reset and see what our priorities are and yeah. um things like that so i love that <laughs> and actually um when you were saying that i was thinking the first time i did the 21 day um i did a challenge uh a handful of years ago but it was what kicked me off to teaching family history and and that's like my passion. I now know why I really wanted to know you. <laughs> we have the same passion because <laughs> it's awesome helping people understand that it's not just it's not just about dead people. It's not just about charts. There's so much more. And the dead people and charts are actually fun once yeah. you find figure it out, you know. But like, but there's so much more to it. And that's one of my very favorite things about all of it is that if people can embrace that, then they all of a sudden get these really incredible psychological benefits too. Yeah. Because um, there's yeah. so much power. So yeah. I love that. I think that one of the challenges that we have today is that our lives, like everything that's recorded about our lives, is digital. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, in the past, you had the box of stuff, right? When someone passed on. Um, yep. And in future, we won't have a box of stuff. True. It's all online. And what happens when, like, like my mom who passed, I don't have her passwords, right? You know, to some of her accounts yeah. and stuff. So, so the question then for us to think about is, which parts of that that you're sharing out there needs to be saved in some way? Printed and how and... do that? Yeah. And there's yeah. Yeah. A lot of um, people that are kind of trying to come up with ideas of how to do that, either printing it out in those books or, you know, there's lots of different versions of that. But you ought to think about that because um, I had a friend that said he was a, he was afraid that we would be the generations with no pictures about us because yeah. it's all digital and it'll be lost, you know? And yeah. So anyway, yeah. So I'm no, thinking about the yeah, I think I want to talk to you when I'm trying to come up with my subjects for Roots Tech for next year. <laughs> I like that thought. Like, I'm like, as I'm just, you're always trying to, but I love that. So, yeah, we'll talk some more after. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, okay, so what ideas do you have for involving young people with family history? What are some of your ideas there? Oh, wow. Okay, that's a good one because kids love to have fun. You know? Right. And it has, so it has to be fun. Whatever you come up with has to be fun. And fun for them, not fun for you. So yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. We have to remember that one. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, so, you know, maybe involve them in figuring out what's fun for them. And then the other thing that I think you connect with is the stories more than anything else. And, and pictures, I think, you know, if you can find pictures of like family members or, um, and even uh, also kids 
they care most about the people they know. So, mm -hmm. you know, the recent past, you know, those that they may be new grandma that maybe has passed away now. If, um, if you start off with them, then that leads to interest in, you know, generations further back. Um, because they can relate to grandma because they knew her. Right. Yeah. So, um, so they care about that. And then um, they also, I think, care about sharing because, you know, that's what they do. Of course. <laughs> so, so, you know, if you can think about, okay, how do I share something in like less than a minute? Or, mm -hmm. you know, how do I take a little, because sometimes there's, the, you know, you have these big, long stories or big, long histories. How do you take out just the little nugget stories and you can put them into memories on family search you can throw them onto facebook i mean there's lots of different make them shareable everything else yeah. is shareable so it's easily shared easily consumed and yeah. they, can, they can then pass it on to others and and comment and stuff so yeah, yeah. Some no i love that i love i love that asking them what they want too um no that's interesting like so I'll just share this one just for fun because people might think it's kind of fun. But my daughter, who's 11, loves graphic novels. And one day I saw her making a graphic novel on her computer for a class project. And I was like, family history. So I convinced her. I told her it was for Roots Tech. So I was like, oh, will you make one for me? And then she made a graphic novel of this story. We just used Family Search's um, memories. Oh, and we found a story. And she turned it into a graphic novel. And then she, but once she was done with it, she was so proud of it because it was something that was exciting to her. And she shared it with all of her cousins and they thought that was awesome, you know? So, so I love that. Like, yeah, talk to them on their level. That makes so much sense. You know, yeah. it, honestly, that works for old people too. Right. Yeah, and we have, what are they interested <laughs> in? Yeah. 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 How do we reach them on their level? That's so cool. I love, I love that. Um, we're all okay. kids, right? I mean, exactly. Okay. Well, and as, as much as we try not to be selfish, the truth is we are like, we, we want to do what we want to do. Like we'll do other things, but right. if we really want to do something, if we can appeal to it on something that we enjoy already, then it's going to be way more successful, which is what's so cool about all the discovery experiences and things that family search does bring to us because it, there's so many different levels you can reach somebody on. So yeah. I love that. And if you're from a place where like, um, you know, your maybe your family comes from lots of different countries or whatever, if that's mm -hmm. what your family mixes, one of the other things that would be fun, I think, for kids is to, to learn about the cultures where their families came from. What's the food they ate? You know, maybe make the food. What's some of the, the cool uh, places you could, you could do um, Google Maps and go, you know, Google Earth and go. Explore. Google Earth. Yeah. And, yeah. And then there's some virtual reality kinds of things out there too. I've seen, which, you know, that's okay. That yeah. makes me feel old thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, cool. <laughs> but I don't know how to do that. I no, I know. <laughs> I'm with you. Well, and I'm loving hearing like, as people are putting them in there, like, say, like, uh, LG Levitt, you know, she's saying that she made a big print picture book for a family reunion, like everyone loves it. Like, and I think that goes back to what you're speaking of, of um, tangible things. Yeah. Like, we do need to think about that, because I am totally a child of the digital era. I'm in the world of like, I am digitizing everything, digitize, digitize, digitize. But the truth is, some of the tangible stuff is what actually matters to people. And so I think keeping that in mind is important, too. So I love that. Okay, so I do have a question. So um, some people just feel like their story doesn't matter when they get in there and they're just struggling. Like, they're like, why would anyone care about what I have to preserve? Like what my story. So my question is, what advice do you have for people who think their story doesn't matter? Or um, if they don't think anyone would care if they record their life story? Okay. So I have a lot of advice on that subject because Yay. I think everybody's story is super important. It doesn't matter who you are. And, um, and the reason, I mean, if you just look at like, have you watched story Trek on like PBS? Um, yeah. 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 So he just goes and finds random people and they have mm -hmm. a really incredible story. I think yeah. That's what he does. And so, um, so a lot of times when I'm speaking and, and people ask that question or why, I'm just boring. You know, why does anyone care about me? You know, things like that. Um, I, th I asked them to think about, okay, so your great aunt, okay, or mm -hmm. your, your grandpa or your great grandpa, would you have loved it if they'd written down their stories or kept a journal or anything like that? Would that just be awesome? And I, 
I personally, I would love that. And I have a few journals that my ancestors kept, but not many. Mm. And, you know, and it's, it's in that kind of story that you get to know people and you get to understand what their challenges were and all of that. And, and that could then strengthen somebody else. Now here's the piece. Absolutely. Because I, I've inherited a lot of journals. Okay. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it is a hard slog, right? To read <laughs> through those things. Cause sometimes yeah. like, well, today we went to the grocery store, you know, whatever. Right. And, and then there's nuggets in there too. Right. So, so think about, okay, how do I, how do I do the super short version of me? You know, the, yeah. the, the key elements of my life, how do, how can I capture that and then share it? And have you thought about creating memories of yourself in family search? Mm. You know, put up your photos and tell your story. Tell it your way. <laughs> yeah, use it as a living journal for yeah, you. Exactly. And then, mm. you know, once you pass on, there it will be, you know. It's already there. It's already saved. Yeah. Huh. Think about the, the little bite-sized pieces of your life that would potentially strengthen someone else or is just interesting um, to you or um, or even sometimes the mundane things like, um, you know, it costs uh, I don't know, what did it cost me to buy a car? You know, and things like yeah. that, where in the future, they'll be like, wow, really? You know, like, like, we look at the price of gas when my grandma was a little girl. And I think, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so oh. I have not met a single person ever that mm -hmm. didn't have something interesting and compelling and something that could help someone else potentially. Um, I love that. You know, because we've all that. been through hard times. We've all been through good times. Yeah. We've all learned stuff. We, you know, yeah. every one of us has experiences that would be beneficial to, to preserve and pass on. I For think. sure. No, that's true. That, see, I'm not good. I'm really good at documenting other people's lives, and I'm really good at digging into, like, finding the stories that are out there. I, like, I will journal, but it's not, it's not consistent, and it's not... <laughs> I don't yeah, know. What, what do you do on Facebook and Instagram? That's, I I know that's exactly you know that's it. That's, that's yeah, good stuff. So anyway. no, I love that. I do love that. I think it's a good point, and it's just kind of taking it to that next step and saving it in some way. So yeah, yeah, that's true. And they've got so many services out there. Like yeah, you've already posted it on Facebook. You've already posted it on Instagram. Just what is it? Chat books or something? Yeah. Um, just turn it into a book and then it's done. <laughs> You've already done it. So yeah, but I would love to document some of the harder things of life too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think sometimes it's hard to write about them because you don't really want to feel the emotions again. You know, you're like, Oh no, I feel good now. I don't know. <laughs> but even as I'm reading the comments on here, a lot of people have shared some hard things and, um, and like the truth is like, I love, um, cat three mil. She says new family, like all these hard things, but new family. So it's like this positive, take on it like no now I have more family to just you know have more family is always a good well it, it should always be a good thing <laughs> so anyway I think that's fantastic so I love that take all right so um as we kind of like turn the corner of wrapping this up I am curious what do you think the future of family history is like what's your take on it given that you've been in the field for so long and you've seen so many changes I can imagine in the amount of time you've been in. Like, I think it's so cool that you came straight out of school and got into it because I did not, you know, that was not my story. And so it's really cool to think of what you must have seen in the amount of time you've been doing it. And so anyway, so with all of that knowledge, um, what do you think the future of family history looks like? Oh, wow. That's a great question. So I, um, I, when I started working at family history library, there were like a dozen computers, I think in the whole building you know really <laughs> yeah oh my so, I mean things have really really changed um yeah so uh so I'll give you my predictions okay. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be wrong but it's, <laughs> but it's fun we'll we'll dig this up in a few years and and show it to you and we'll see how how yeah, true they come <laughs> we'll see how close I so I just think that um so in the past in family history we lived in what I would call data scarcity Okay. okay, where you had to go to an archive, you had to really dig to get information to, to piece together the story of your, your family members, right? Mm -hmm. So in the future, we won't be in that space. And in fact, we're, we're, we're already uh, in, in the space of a lot of data, a lot, a lot, a lot of data. And I don't yeah. know how much you've paid attention to artificial intelligence and some of the things mm -hmm. going on there. 
But yeah. um, I think we're going to see a day when computers can take all of that data and start to help to piece together the life of an individual and then just bring it to us as humans to say, oh, yeah, I think that's right or wrong. And so I yeah. have tools to help us. And so the thing that's been kind of the realm of a, of a researcher, you know, mm -hmm. understanding how to do um, some complex analysis and things like that, I think that will get simpler and it will be okay. where, where it will be more accessible to people. I also think that um, DNA will continue to be an interesting part of what we do. I mean, I could see as more and more people test and more and more people put up their family trees, because if you test, put up your tree or you're, you're not getting the full benefit. Yeah, right. And more and more people do that. I could imagine a day when a new person coming in this space would, you know, spit in a tube, get their results and it would say, hey, here's your tree because so and so is your, you know, worst cousin or whatever. And there's their tree. So so yeah. I that there'll be more uh, experiences like that as as more people do DNA and get their tree. I also think that we're going to see the discovery kind of aspects of this, like discovering cultures and and um, the history uh, at the time of our ancestors is going to get even richer with with VR, virtual reality, uh -huh. other things. Um, in fact, there's this great project um, that's called, what is it called? Oh, I'm going to forget now that I want to talk about it. Shoot. <laughs> anyway, it's, a, it's a project they're doing in Europe to recons. Oh, Venice. It's the Venice Time Machine. Oh, um, yes. Have you seen that? Uh, yeah, someone at Family Search showed it to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool what they're doing. They're trying to reconstruct Venice through history and show, uh, okay, so they virtually recreated it mm -hmm. based on lots of different things out of the archives and stuff. And then they're plugging in and saying, okay, at this house, this person lived there and this was their occupation. I mean, it's just amazing. So you can imagine the future actually mm -hmm. walking through the town where your ancestor was from and, and kind of experiencing it at a whole different level than, than we can. Yeah. Which yeah, I know. Wait. Well, and, and if you haven't, like, if, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's really hard to fathom. But yeah, I remember someone showing me, like, I guess Facebook likes to show their, I think it was Facebook, show their technology early on, like, just kind of give you snippets. And I was seeing this demo of them, like, recreating the inside of a house just based off of like, but a virtual inside of a house. It was a 3D walkthrough of a house based off of just different pictures that had been taken by the family. Yeah. And obviously there was holes in it, but it was like, I was walking through this house and they didn't have a video of it. It was something that was pre, you know, and I was like, what? But that's like how cool artificial intelligence truly is. It can, it can just, ah, it's so cool. So I love yeah. what you're saying. Cause you're right. As you're, as you're talking about that, then this project, I'm like, you're right. Like, it's just, there's so many holes that could be filled in artificial through artificial intelligence that could make it yeah. really cool and so come to about, life. Think about, I don't know if any of you are Star Trek fans. I kind of grew up on Star Trek. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, the holodeck. So you uh -huh. know, walking into the holodeck and saying, show me, you know, uh, let's see, Suckley Parish, where my ancestors came from. Show, show me 18, whatever, you know, and, and yeah. actually walk you through and it'd be like you were there. Maybe there'd even yeah. be little avatars that represent the people and your ancestors. You know, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I think it would be amazing. That would be so cool. So yeah, who knows? We'll see. But I think it'll be interesting. But you all heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure Just... I'm completely wrong. <laughs> But we'll come back. We'll do a time capsule and come back and check it on like our uh, our thirtieth experiment. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll come back and check. No, I'm just kidding. But actually, that does lead me into. We do want to let everybody know we are going to do this experiment again. So we're going to keep up all of the resources that we've put together, and we're going to keep those there so that people can continue to do it throughout normal life. But we're also going to do like an official one again in October. We decided because it's Family History Month, so we thought it would be a really cool month to do that so you should definitely come back and do it with us um and yeah do you have anything else you want to tell us is there anything that we didn't tap into that you're like oh they've got to know about this or anything no i just say you know hang in there everybody and my heart goes out to any of you that have been impacted by you know covid either with jobs or or the sickness and i just uh you know i hope that you're blessed and watch over you know yeah. this time and you know, let's just use this as a great opportunity to connect in new ways and because um, that's what it's about. Yeah.
Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Like this has been so much fun. Oh, hi from England yeah. or I'm from Payson, <laughs> Utah. Uh, but hello, those of you that are joining from other places. It was so fun to have you guys keep joining us. Um, come back, join the experiment, keep working, share your stories. We love hearing them. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Diane. Thank you so much. Um, have a fabulous afternoon and we'll talk to you again, hopefully soon. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. I, uh, and